so glad you're here. Good to see you. Uh, we're going to have a brief talk today about something. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. We'll have to see if we can just sneak up on it and you know what it is. Is everybody happy? Yes. Are you good? Are you glad you're here? Yes. You know, try to walk in the building every day with an, with an idea that this is a lesson. That there's something we get to do. Sometimes we all feel like, man, I gotta work, or I gotta go to school, or I gotta do this. You know, it's not about gotta, it's called get it. You know, I get to do it, I feel good about it, and it's all about how I look at a thing. You know, whatever you see is what you're gonna get. Remember the two birds that fly over a desert? There's only two. One sees exactly what they're looking for, and so the other. First one's called a cactus bird. They fly over a desert and they see the cactus. And there's one flower that comes out of it. That's the only way this bird will live, is with that cactus flower. Finds it and it lives. The other kind of bird is called vulture. You know what vultures feed on? Dead stuff. So we can walk in the building, we can walk into this classroom, you can walk into any classroom, and find exactly what you're looking for. Either you're a cactus bird or you're a vulture. You like dead stuff, you like alive stuff. We speak words of life or we speak words of death. It's just really the choice that we make every day, right? And it takes us a long time to, to willfully, intentionally live like a cactus bird. Intentionality is what it's about. Being intentional, not being accidental. You don't accidentally say something bad about somebody. You know, that's intentional. Words of death are intentional. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? And everything in your heart is what you speak. So if we can be intentional about keeping our heart clear and being smart about what we do and how we do it, we're going to be in better shape. So I want to talk to you about, I'm just going to use the word brand and see what you think of. When you think of the word brand, tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Label. The label? Okay, thanks. Well, everybody talk to me. Jordan. Okay, cool. That's a brand. Cattle. What? Cattle. Cattle brand. That's a good, that one hurts. <laughs> don't want that kind of brand. We're not talking about that kind of brand. <laughs> I feel like I've been branded before, haven't you? They can do freeze branding. Okay, freeze branding. Eric? Image? Great. Branding and image. What's the first image you think of if you think of a brand? Name a brand. Nike. 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 Okay, we're on a tennis shoot, okay? McDonald's. McDonald's. That, it took longer to get that than normal. You know, they get that like in about a second. Everybody thinks McDonald's. Biggest brand we know. Name another one. Walmart. Walmart, Burger King. Yeah, we said food, so let's say another food. Mm -hmm. Walmart's good. It's really good. Keep going. Come on. Target. 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 Uh, yes. Good. What's another one? Uh, Coke and Pepsi. Google is right. You're looking at it. Huh? Levi's. Yep. Levi's. Yahoo. Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Apple. Apple's a great brand. Great brand. Why keep saying that? What makes a brand great? Popularity. Exactly. But bigger than that, because there's a lot of good products that we don't know. They don't have a good brand. And the amount of heart that goes into it? I think that's part of it, sir. What else? Okay. Y'all are saying really good stuff. You're all over it. The, the key to a brand is what, what's in your mind about it. How did they do that to us? How did McDonald's and Google and Apple and Coke, Pepsi, Miller Lite. How did those guys? I can say that now. We didn't need mirrors too many times. I'm so free. <laughs> but, but when you name it, how did they get it to the point where we all think almost the same thing? Advertising. Partly. But I can think of some brands you don't consume in advertising. Word of mouth. Yes. How about consistency? Experience with it? Brains telling you about it, word of mouth? Is that what we said? Yeah. Advertising, all of it added together. Online experience, did anybody say that, but that's part of it? There's just a lot of little things going on. They all add up to this thing we think about, the brand we're thinking about. Are you with me? So that's what forms a brand. Well, let's take a little bit of a switch. Just a little quick trip over to your brand. Everybody in this room has a personal brand. Whether we want it or not, we have done little things that contribute to it, and I want to kind of work with you a little bit on what those things are, and try to identify. Um, I'm writing that. Try to identify everything I can to what contributes to a personal brand. 
you, if you understand what branding is, I, I can say Google and you know what it is. I can say McDonald's, I can say the arches, you know what it is. I can put the arches up on an interstate. Don't worry about it, ma'am. It's okay. It's, it's I can put the arches up on a highway with an arrow and you know the exit. We don't need a long four paragraph story about where to go get the hamburger. I see the arches, I see the arrow, done. And does that happen in our life? I see it coming, done. Some, some of us get there before we get there because of reputation. You know, I know who you are, and I, and I don't know any of you. I've, I've been seeing you around buildings, so I'm getting to know you, you a little bit, but I don't know you. You don't know me. You know, and so we don't have a brand. And I would assume that that could be very offensive to me. Some people don't want to hang around suits, and I understand that. But I, I wear my uniform, you wear yours. We all just kind of have to be who we are. And when I try to be you, if I try to wear jeans and a t-shirt, I'm not me and I'm not comfortable. That's just, we all just wear what we're comfortable with. And that begins to formulate our brand. But here's the point. I can see you walk in the front door and you get there before you get there. You know, I can see you coming and I form brand thoughts, just like the, the arches. You know, I've seen you online. I've seen you act in class or not. I've seen you in a bar. I've watched you. And none of us are taking up. Some people are judgmental. We've met those people. We don't hang around them. But some people are judgmental and want to spread your brand. They don't want to spread their brand. They want to spread your brand. And say stuff about you and put labels on you. Don't you hate labels? Mm -hmm. You know, we like to label Coke and Pepsi and Burger King and McDonald's, but they don't want to label. Because all of us think that we're changing, especially away from those things people say about us. People say things about us and We've heard those things said, and it hurts us or it helps us. Either way, we've got these thoughts said about us, and we're constantly trying to change it. I don't want to be that guy. January 1st, every year, we make resolutions to change something. And it lasts till the 3rd or the 4th. But we're really trying to change something. I don't know how many resolutions I've had about my belly. But me and my belly are at one with one another. <laughs> I'm working on it. It just is what it is. And that's uh, hard. It's hard to change ourselves, especially the outward appearance. Our hearts can change before we can change other things. You know, makeup's a good thing. That helps us to change. You know, that's what makeup companies sell. Did you know that? Makeup companies don't sell makeup. They sell hope. <laughs> Some of us need a lot of hope. <laughs> I don't think that about myself. Why don't they make makeup for men? You know, and they do of sorts, but it doesn't work like it does for you later. Makeup's very kind of you. <laughs> if we can do that to our hearts, and I mean all that very positively, I hope you don't think I'm mocking it, but what, could we do that with our heart? And, and have our hearts change so that our outward appearance changes, and so that what people look at changes. Well, I think they do. I think we can do that ourselves. I think we're in control. You all would call this, uh, what's your word for a personal brand? You tell me. What's another word for it? What people think about you. What's that called? Your personality, that's one. Reputation. Reputation. That's the word I'm looking for. Let's put the word reputation and brand together. And I have a reputation. McDonald's has a reputation. Coke has a reputation. And we can describe it very easily. So do you agree with me? Are you with me in this thought that reputation and brand are the same thing? Yeah. It's just about the same deal. Yeah. We're more thought of as having a rep. You know, and we're either accepted for that rep or we're trying to change it. And some of us feel like, why bother to change it? Nobody will accept me however I am. And we get into the bully grubs and the can't help us and I'm destined to what people think about me and I can't change. Look at you. Look at where you are. You're changing. You walk in these doors. Every minute you walk in one of these doors, you're saying to myself, I can change. I want more. I want to do this thing that I'm studying. You know, and it's a pretty short path. You can see the end. You know you're going to get there. You can do it. And you're, you're telling yourself that every time you walk in the door. I can change. God's got more for me. I can take it. You're feeling that. You're feeling it. And you're doing something about it. How many years did you not do something about it? So you're trying to change your brand a little bit. You're doing a new package. You want to prove Sometimes you get a new do, you get a makeover, all those things. Isn't that it? 
What's a makeover? What's a new do? Somebody trying to change the way they look, the way they are. I, and I'm constantly working on the inside. That, that's where I work. And obviously, my image is important too. But image is all these things put together. And that's what I just want to spend just a couple more minutes with you about to make sure you and I get to the same place when we know what can go wrong in reputation building. I could teach a class to you and bore you to death, some of you would like it, but I could talk to you about how to blow a brand, how to ruin McDonald's brand. That's why they work so hard at it, how to take any product that you would buy and hurt their brand. I bet you could too. Do it pretty quick. You know, let's just get out of the chat room and talk about it. Let's post bad reviews and let's let the restrooms go away. You know, just treat them bad, let them get all dirty. Watch the sales drop within a week. Within, within two or three days, nationally. How about this? E. coli scare at McDonald's. Boom chocolate. Done. <laughs> Not going to eat a hamburger. No. We, we talked about that. The value of an ad like that, the impact of McDonald's is $1 billion. If, if, it, if it really happened, if there was a breakout of E. coli in, in just one restaurant, $1 billion a day. Wow. That's scary. That would be to clean up your hamburger mess. You know, keep everything clean and spotless in the kitchen. They've never had it, never had a problem. They're scared, but they've all been proven to not be. But I'm that guy too. You know, and what's the effect of one little mistake upon the rest of my reputation? You know, especially a mistake when, when it's one that people can see and know to, and be aware of. Let's go to Facebook. You know, one little joke. One little posting of something not so cool, uh, one mocking, one putting up of a picture of you doing something crazy, and then you try to apply for a job. Do you know that HR goes to Facebooks and uh, looks at theirs almost as the second one? Before we hire anyone, we take a real good review of their Facebook. We want to see what they're showing people. How about Instagram? What pictures are you willing to post of these? What do you look like? How? This is you now. We're living in this age. It's not whether it's right or wrong. It just is. It's what people do. And they it's not stalking. It's looking. You're posted it. That's what you think. So we can find out a lot about you, your reputation, what you like to do, your hobbies, who you hang around, what you think is fun. That's a great interview. We can just get up on there and look at you. I've, I've told my students before a lot of times to get it cleaned up before you get out of school. And clean up is not that there's anything bad. It's just, is that the picture you want to eat? You know, the falling down drunk, standing on one toe, and hoping to make it to the model. And it's fun in the moment. Everything seems fun. And people take five, six pictures of you, and they put it up. It was harmless. It was just a night. It didn't mean anything by it. It's not your character. It's not who you are. But it's sure up there to find you. And people can take that wrong. I can put an ad up about McDonald's, and people can take it wrong. So it's not true. So I'm going to caution you and kind of cheer for you a little bit and say, do a real good review. Look at all your old photos and see if there's something out there that you're not so proud of. That if somebody else saw the band you stand here, and you can say, well, that's me. That's who I am. That's what I want to show. Really? Is it really, you? Is it really the part of you that you want to show? If so, it will, and that will be your brand. And then you might get to an age or a place in a business that you know, thing that you're here to study, where people look at that and say, man, I just don't know if they make good choices. You know, I don't know if that's the kind of person we can get the keys to a building to, or we can count on to do this or do that. Give us some thought. I'm not preaching to you. I'm just saying it's your reputation, what are you doing with it? It's your personal brand. It's kind of important. How about a handshake? The first extension, I, I talk to students. I teach sales classes, and I teach a lot of marketing. One class I can remember particularly, uh, it was a personal selling class, I taught proper handshakes and uh, eye contact. Have y'all worked on that? Handshaking? Next week in high performance. Next week. I'll leave that to you and let you see what you find out. But let me say this to you so you pay really good attention when that comes. That a handshake and eye contact, I'm trying to look at all of your eyes. I'm trying to see everybody because that's the window to what's going on on the inside. You know, I can really see a lot about you just by looking in your eyes. I'm not super spooky or anything. I'm just picking you up. That's your brand. Your eyes are your brand. What you're saying to me, how you say it, it's in your eyes. And you can't fake your eyes. You can put makeup over it, but the eyes, you can't touch. You know, I guess you put contact to change the color. I can still see you. 
and you can still see me, and that's that's good. We gotta be able to see each other. Y'all may not know if I'm real yet. My eyes will tell you. My eyes will tell you if this discussion is real. And if I'm connecting with you in a real way, you gotta look in my eyes to know for sure. Oh, I use words. And that's what you gotta think about yourself and how you send out stuff. Why is it? I've heard this four or five hundred times. Why is it that people don't catch me? They don't get me. I hear that from people all the time. They just don't know me. I'm so misunderstood. They don't get me. What do you send? You know, it's maybe the sender is sending out stuff that you didn't mean to send. It's just your body language, your eyes, what we call, and I'm kidding when I say it, my tood. You know, I'm sending out this attitude, and it's a brand. This is, you remember pig pen and peanuts? You know, everywhere pig pen went, he had dust around him, right? He's a mess. Y'all would say he's a hot mess. But he goes out, he gets into the school. He comes into the school, he goes home, he goes play, wherever he goes. He goes in bowling. He walks in, there's a mess all around. <laughs> Every single cartoon ever drawn, we never saw a pig in without his mess. Right? Is that us? It's us. We carry it with us. Sometimes they, it can be seen, sometimes we hide it, we camouflage it, we make it up. But our mess is there. And people see it. How about this? There are certain people in your life when they come into your space and talk to you. I used to say it in front of my office. But they just come into your office. They're with you. And when you catch them, you just pray that they're going to go away. You know, because when they come, they're going to bring that pocket full of mess. But I'm going to tell you about who did what for them, how bad it is. And you can't wait for it to be over. Because it's every time they come, they can't remember who they told the story to, but here it comes again. Somebody done me wrong. I'm going to get some country music song. And I'm going to sing it every time they listen to it. You know, it's three chords and a cloud of dust. And I'm going to sing my country song and tell you about my dog and how my neighbor shot it. You know, and I'm going to shoot them next. And that's it. That's what country music is for all of us who are sad, down, and you know, I love country music. But I'm trying not to listen to the words. <laughs> yeah. Man, it makes me feel bad. I'm going to cry if I can watch a soap opera or something. Somebody had done somebody wrong song. You know? Wow, we got to stop it. We got to be the change it. You're the person in your family that can stop it. You're the person with your last name, with your brand, with who you are. You have total control. A lot of mess we brought with us from our upbringing. All of us. I can tell you stories you wouldn't believe about my life. You wouldn't believe it, so I won't tell you. But people who know me and I tell them can't believe I went through that kind of childhood. But I did. And I had a choice to make. Is am I going to live in that, rock in that, or am I going to do something different, change my brand? I remember in high school, some girl, I had never seen her before. It was my first time in school. And I'm on one side of the room over here, and she's over there. We walk out and hit the door at about the same time, and she called me trash. She put another label in front of me. But she called me trash. I ain't never done her nothing. That's what they say in New Orleans. Why'd you do me that way? Did you do me something? Don't do me something. <laughs> she, I never done her anything. Never ever spoke to her. First day in school. And she could label me trash. That way. That was really good for myself. It kept me quiet for a long time. You know, this is one of the five different high schools. That will ruin a guy. You know, or it'll give you something new as you go through life realizing the change is constant. We've got a military grad or two in the room knows all about change. You know, and five high schools will mess you up. You know, because you never have a friend. You don't have a buddy. You don't have a, a best friend in life. You just kind of go through it. But it made me able, as I've grown, obviously changed a lot, able to go to a new market, get moved, go to San Francisco, go to Canada, all over the country. And it never really be a part of it. And it was an innate skill. I learned it in five high schools. What we've all got to do is consider the fact that change is all intentional. It's very rare to accidentally change my attitude. Does that sound right? I accidentally got happy to do that. It's intentional. I intend, I don't care what happens to me, who does me wrong, who talks trash about me, who doesn't treat me right, doesn't control me. It's their problem. They're hurting people hurt people, right? Hurting people hurt people. If, you, if people hurt you, they're hurting. You just know it. Pray for them. 
do whatever you would do for somebody. Don't punch them in the mouth. That's not really good. But hurting people hurts you. And so I expect it now because everybody's hurt. Never surprise me someone was hurt. Say something bad about me. Judge me. Throw me away. Call me trash. But it, I'm not surprised anymore. I've lived a long time. I'm 60. So I'm a geezer. And one thing geezers know is that people hurt people. And sometimes it's not, it's not even intentional. I don't even know that we're doing because we're so You know, and we're trying to survive. We put faces on coping mechanisms. We cope by hurting. By lashing out, I'm a rat in the corner, so I'm going to put my eyes up and show my teeth. My ass too. I don't want to be that guy. And my brand and my reputation has got to be, which way would you rather be known as? Someone who is nasty, mean, full of bad jokes, full of no class, or nice, sweet, loving. Some yes. version of those two. Yes. And, and who's in control? Yeah. Absolutely. You're going to go far. I mean, I don't have to study you. I don't know you. I probably do. I can see you drive, I hear you comment, and your energy. You got some positive energy. I want to, see, he comes to me, I want to spend time with him. That person with a bucket of rain falling off their head, but they want to get me, they're getting me wet and all in their mess. <laughs> you know, I've got to listen to them. I've got to try to help them because I care about them. And, and I, would, I might be the only person in their life that can listen to them positively and try to help them change. You know, every now and then a good knock it off really works. You know, just to tell somebody, knock it off. Why are you all like that? You know, you're like that because you're like that. You obviously like that. Because that's who you are. Everywhere, and I'm pointing, I didn't mean to point. But wherever where you go, there you are. I tell this in church a lot. I say this in church, say it in my school, and everybody who's having for class, let me say it. Wherever you go, there you are. A lot of people change their life by trying to change their place. They'll move to Denver. Mm-hmm. By the time you get moved in, I'm new. Nobody knows from here. I can start over. I got a fresh start. I can be me. About three days later, you show up. You all comes a little late. <laughs> and there you come. And you say something that you've always said. You think something you've always thought. There you are. You show up. So every new situation you go into, how you see men is how you see men. How you see women is how you see women. You show up. And you continue the, the terrain to do what you've always done. So only one person can change it, and that's you and your brain. Your breath does not define your future. Who you've been is not who you are. Does that free you a little bit? And how you want to create your new brand? How, I've, I've gone in and done brand therapy. I've been this hired to change the image of brands. And then it changed our brand image. You heard those two together? Brand image. They hire marketers to change brand image. Let's change my brand image. I can't do it for you. I can cheer for you. I can give you words of encouragement. I can pray for you. I can do anything you want to do try to help you. But if, when you leave me, if you don't do what you do, if you show up and do what you've always done, then your brand's going to be what it's always been. So personal brand. Your personal takeaway from this today is I'm in total control of what I'm going to be today. I'm not anymore in bondage and shackles and beat downs over what I used to be. It's gone. It's forgotten. I'm not carrying a pen with it. My, my next cartoon, the one that Charles Schultz draws of me next, is going to be free of my mess. And however I make messes, however I show them, I'm in control and I can change it. Do you believe that? Does anybody believe it? Yes. Can I get an amen? Yes. I say, you don't want to say it. Be free. Be the dog. If you want to say amen, say it. No bondage here. There's no restrictions or rules like that. We're trying to help you become who you want to be. Every single person you meet who works here wants to help you change. Not to what we think you should change to. That's just more bondage. You need to change. Be like me. That's about them. <laughs> Nobody else wants to be like me. Trust me. It's not a work. You just want to be who you want to be. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Don't let any advertisement, any script that's been said over you, any words you've been told all your life, what a guy has said, what a girl has said, what mom and dad has said, you're wrong. I can say you an astronaut. That doesn't make you one. You have to be one to be. And if you're not what people say you are, then you're not. 
and you know that. And if you made mistakes, who hasn't? Every single one of us yesterday would like to live it again so I could correct a couple of things. Say something a little differently, get up a little earlier, read a little more. Well, I want to do something different yesterday well, I can, when I can today. And I just want you to believe that. You came to this school because you want to change something. We want to help you. But we don't want to change you into us. We want to change you into you. Whoever it is you want, we're going to train you and teach you in your field. That's going to happen. You're going to love it. You're in the right place. You're going to stand next to master teachers. People who are teaching because they want to. They're gifted in the thing that you want to learn. And all of you are different. This is a great little three-week time for you to really think about and contemplate and enjoy it. You get to walk in and hear old people yell at you. You know, that's a pretty good deal. You know, and, and you add to that your technical training, the sky's the limit. Where you get your self, your brand, your image, the way you want it to be, while you're learning new skills and new techniques, then your income's going to change, your life will change, the way you live it, what you think about yourself. Wow. And I walked out the door different than I came in. Sounds like church. And I, I never want anybody to go out to church different. I mean, the same as they came in. That was a waste of time there. And I don't think one day at school, not one day at school, should I walk out the door the same person. Think a little bit. You know, two ways to change you. Dread, dread, drop the time, drop the time. Or a bucket of water. Which do you think changes you? Really can change your image. The bucket is going to get wet. Drift. And this is true, it's a science. You put a stone, an uneven rock underneath your gutter spout, the dripping will warm it up, it will smooth it over. A bucket of water on it, it will change that rock a bit. But drip, drip, drip every day, two years, five years, ten years, the rock smooths over. It changes its image. A rock. They're pretty hard. I've been known to have a hard head. So every drop that falls, you can do whatever they want. Look for your drip today. Write it down. Ask yourself where you go to sleep tonight. Why not change today? What do I think differently? What do I think differently about myself? Is my brand image changing? Can I get rid of all these thoughts that I've had before and allow myself to be new and clear? You're here for that. Change something. We want you to change your income, sure. Money's not everything. Not if all the all the stinking thinking goes with it. You know? We, I, look, they do it all the time. People who win lotteries end up right back where they used to be a very short period of time, two or three years. Lots of studies done. Why? Wow. Maybe the same. Not to change anything, you know? And I think that's what CLD is all about. We want to get to your heart first and then teach you skills and job abilities that can allow you to go through your, your destiny. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Keep reaching high. Keep believing that whoever you are, it's up to you. You can change it. One last thought, and I'm going to take a couple of questions if you've got it. Just, just a thought that I teach a lot. That your gifts will open doors for you. Who you are, how you learn, how you're taught, who you become. The doors are going to open for you. You're going to get a job opportunity. This school does a great job of finding you the career you want to be in. You won't have trouble if you all that. Study, do you stuff, we'll get you a job. Your gift will open the door for you. Your character keeps you there. So many people don't understand the importance of what's in you. Your character, what you'll do and what you want to do. The choices you make makes your brand. Every day that you make a choice, you contribute to your image, to your brand. Make the right choices. You know right from wrong. You know you. Be you. Be the original. Don't try to be somebody else. I hope that helps. What questions do you have? Is there anything you want to ask me about? School, anything at all? I've been here, I'm in my third week. I've been with Teresa for two years as a consultant to her. Uh, I've taught leadership classes for her, taught admissions counselors quite a bit. I spent a lot of time here. I fell in love with the students, without you knowing it, um, and who you are and what you want to be, and I want to help you. And I want to help Teresa. I want to help the staff, the team. They're all here with the same heart. I haven't met anybody that works here yet that's got a job. I don't see any of the things I gotta go to work, I gotta go to my job. I think they get to go to work and they get to go do things to help you. That's what I'm seeing. And I don't think I'm an easy fake. I think I'm like pretty well tell the just when Shinola and the other stuff. <laughs> I think I can figure it out. Any questions? Nothing on your mind?
This is going to be a good day. So how are you? I'm great. I, I'm in heaven. You're super motivated. You're great. Yeah. 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 I didn't use any pom-poms. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> but you're sitting back here saying, no, I can't. You know, so pom-poms don't work. It just makes you feel good. It gives you goosebumps. The kinds of things I'm saying to you can change you. Can do it just today. Just these words can change you if you intend it. If you get intentional, rock and roll comes next. I've never seen anybody not be able to turn around that really desire. Never ever seen it fail. It's just they give up on themselves too quick. They try. I did it for two days. <laughs> Come back at me after 200 days, and we'll talk some more. Takes a little bit. Just every day, and just believe in yourself every day. And nobody else is script for it. Kind of keep saying that. Maybe somebody can say that. Don't let what somebody else says about you guide you. It's not true. You're true. Be true to yourself. Watch what happens. By the way, my wife works here also. She is the assistant to Dr. Kerr. You'll see in that quite a bit. We've been married over 40 years. We have two kids. We both turned 60, and we had a 40th anniversary this year. So 2013 was a very bad year. <laughs> well, I, got, I got old, she got old, and we got married a long time. But throughout our marriage, we have tried to keep this consistent. We don't script each other. I don't tell her what she's not, she doesn't tell me what I'm not. We just speak life and we serve each other. You know, I try to out serve her. We fight over who's going to serve her. That's a good fight. You know, and that's for you. That can happen. I don't care what's happened to this minute, it can change. It's just a mindset change. There I go. If somebody else isn't treating you right, you have to talk. You can't talk to me that way. You can't treat me that way. Fix it! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a man, huh? You know, you're going to try to fix it. <coughs> I don't quite mean it that seriously, but I, I want you to be what you are. And that's what these two teachers of yours are. I want more than anything else. Is to speak life over you, speak possibility. You know, and, and it should invade your space a little bit. I should, everything I said today should challenge you a little bit. It, it, sometimes it, I gotta make people mad at you to get them to change. You know, sting a little bit, stop on your feet a little bit. Say you can do it without pop on. The true, meaningful, take away words. Throw a lot of words at you. Take them away. Internalize what you want. Some of you are all that already. You like where you want to be. You're doing what you want. You're one of us. You're okay. You're all okay. I just don't know you. He, he helped me to get going real quick. He's out. But many of you are just okay. You're just right where you want to be internally. In your peace. If you're not, fix it. Change your image. Change your brand image. Look in the mirror and see something different because it's there. I can see it in you. I'll speak over any one of you. I'll speak over what God says about you. Some of you don't want to hear it. That's okay. I just want you to be what you want. Why did you come here? Let's get that for you. You made a choice. You came around here. We didn't drive you. That might have worked. Some people need us to drive them in, huh? And get them exposed to these two guys. We get you exposed to these two. Things can change in three weeks. You can feel it. Hopefully you feel different today. Is that all right? Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> Ladies, anything you want me to address that I missed? Oh, I'm pumped up. Yeah. You're pumped up? I want to get a picture with you. Did I, I talk too long? You guys? What? Come on, picture. Oh, I love that. Actually, do it. Come on, I'll see you.